What's up guys, so it's been another week and it's time for a new screencast. So this week we've had the Build 2016 conference held by Microsoft and they've announced a bunch of fun uh, news and we're definitely gonna be covering some of the features especially about ASP.NET Core in future screencasts but for now we're gonna do another programming interview question that's pretty popular so we're gonna talk about recursion so even if you apply to a job uh, for an object-oriented programming job uh, the interviewers might ask you about things like recursion during the interview and the way you can pick up if they are uh, hinting that they want uh, a recursive solution to a problem is that they may for, uh, form the question like um, reverse this string uh, but don't use any loops. Uh, then you should probably be able, be able to figure out that they don't want an iterative approach, they want a recursive approach. Uh, and since we did prime numbers last time, let's do faculty this time. Um, so if you don't know what faculty is, uh, if you pass in 5, then you want the result uh, or the sum to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's going to give us 120. And a recursive function is well suited for a problem like this. Uh, so we can start by simply doing an iterative approach first and then take a look at how the recursive approach looks. So if you don't know what recursion is, it simply means that we're going to write a method that's going to call itself uh, over and over again until we simply stop calling ourselves. Uh, because that's uh, really one of the main points. We're going to need to stop calling ourselves Otherwise, we're gonna get a stack overflow. We'll get an infinite loop where we just call ourselves over and over again until uh, it blows up. Uh, so, recursion simply means call, uh, writing a method that's gonna call itself until we stop. Uh, so, let's implement faculty now. And I'm gonna do this in Visual Studio Code once again. And uh, you can do this with any editor of choice. You can do it with a pen and paper. Interviewers usually do this up on the whiteboard, so you don't really need to have a program that compiles. Uh, having a problem, a, a program that compiles, sometimes even makes uh, this the situation even worse because then you probably need to check for edge cases and stuff like that to make your program work. Uh, on the whiteboard, you can probably just slip uh, a bug or two past the interviewers without them even noticing it. So. Uh, probably not for a simple problem like this, uh, but uh, as we did prime factorization the last time, uh, you can probably get away with a lot more by doing uh, uh, by solving it on the whiteboard than providing a program that should be able to handle all the edge cases and uh, give the right solution for uh, yeah every simple uh, a, a general input. Uh, so let's do faculty now. So we're gonna get in uh, a ver uh, a an arg to our program from the args and we're going to parse it as an integer. Uh, we're not going to do any uh, checking here, we're just going to assume that we're passing in a number to our program that we want to calculate faculty for. Uh, so at the end we're just going to simply type our number and then say faculty. We use the exclamation point to express faculty uh, and that equals and then we're going to give a result. So let's introduce result and initialize that to 1. So let's begin with the iterative approach. So the main thing here is to figure out when to start and when to stop. It's the same thing when we do the recursive, uh, the recursive approach as well. So for how long do we need to iterate? And we can do this uh, two different ways. We can start at 5 and then count backwards down to 1. Uh, or we can start from 1 uh, and then up to our actual number. Uh, so we're going to go uh, from 1 or actually we can start uh, from 2. Uh, because multiplying by 1 is simply just going to give us the same uh, answer as we had in the iteration before that. So we're going to iterate up to our number. So that's really important here. We want the equal sign here. And we definitely don't want to start at 0. Uh, because that's going to end up with 0 when we multiply whatever we multiply with. Uh, so here we can start by 1. But we can do uh, iterate one time less by simply starting from 2. 
and our result's gonna be really simple here. We're just gonna multiply with our uh, iteration variable. And if we run our program now and pass in five, dnx run and pass in five, we should get 120. And it seems to work. So that's pretty cool. But now uh, let's try to give them a recursive uh, a recursive solution to this instead. So we're gonna, instead of iterating like this, we can comment that out. We're gonna be calling a new method here. Let's call it faculty and pass in our number. And now let's declare our function. It's gonna be a static function. And let's make it a long because uh, the numbers uh, tend to get very large pretty quickly. And we're gonna pass in a couple of large numbers or we really don't need to pass in large numbers to a program, but we're gonna get large results pretty fast. Uh, so faculty, and then we'll just get the number in here. And now we need to call ourselves uh, and decrease the number that we're passing into ourselves. So we multiply by a different number each time. So we simply go, n times and then we want to call ourselves again but we don't want to call with the same number again we want to decrease by one so we start by five and then we're gonna pass in four three two uh, but if we just leave it like this we're gonna be calling ourselves until the program explodes so we need to figure out when to stop and when to stop uh, is pretty trivial for this solution uh, simply when we reach one, then we can return one. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So if you run the program now again, we get 120 again. But this time we are doing, doing it with recursion. Uh, and it's really not any harder than that. And this is a pretty common into your question. And you should probably be able to give them a recursive solution uh, pretty quickly, just like I did now. So uh, I think we have time for another for another problem as well. So uh, let's do summing up a binary tree, uh, which is a pretty common into question as well. Uh, and binary trees tree simply means that we have nodes, and each node can have a value, but it can also point to two different nodes. So they might point to uh, it might be the leaf node, uh, but it might also just point to a left node or only a right node, or it, it can point to a left and a right node. Uh, and this is also a problem that is really well suited for a recursive solution. Let's say the interview asks you to write a, a method that sums up all the values of a binary tree. And then you should uh, provide a recursive function. So let's do that. So if we try to describe a node with a class, we could do it in the following manner. We can declare a class, and you can really do this with any language, or it doesn't really need to be a language at all. But we, let's lose, use C sharp here, and we're gonna declare it as three properties. We're gonna have a value, and then we're gonna have a reference to another node, which we'll call a left node, and then we're gonna have a reference to uh, another node, which will be a right node. And this is really the data structure that we need. So now we can go ahead and declare our root node uh, along with a couple of leaves. Uh, so let's start out really simple here. And probably you can, you can also use a recursive uh, way of declaring a, a, a binary tree, but let's just do it in code here so we can make sure that we get the right answer. So we're gonna declare a new node, which is our root, which will have a value, and the value will be five, and then we'll have a left node, which will be a new node with its own value, right? So let's give this a value of four, and then declare a right node, which will have its own value. So we simply have one root node uh, along with one left and right node, which have, which themselves have one simple value. So if we want to sum this up and we give the right node the value of three, we should get a five plus four plus three, which should equal 12 when we sum this up. Uh, so let's once again, go ahead and just print 
the sum sum is and then give our result and we're gonna do this recursively so we're gonna call it sum just and we're gonna pass in a root node so now we need to declare this sum function that's gonna be a recursive function and this is a really really well suited uh, problem to solve with recursion. You could of course do an iterative approach, but recursion is really appropriate uh, in this case. Uh, so let's go ahead and declare our static uh, method. It's gonna re return an int and we're gonna sum, sum it up and we're gonna pass in a reference to a node. So we're gonna start by passing in the root node, but we're also gonna pass all the potential uh, other nodes that are linked to this root node. And what we want to do here, once again, just as we did in the faculty uh, method, we want to call ourselves over and over again until we know that we are done. So that's the key piece to figure out. So when we should stop calling ourselves. So we need to simply return our current nodes value. And then we need to traverse down the left and the right uh, node and we don't really know if we have a left and right node but what we do know is we kind of need to check if we have uh, other nodes uh, linked to this node so we're gonna pass in left and then we want to sum sum up everything that's to the right so let's go node dot right and uh, this will probably not work when we reach, or it won't work actually when we reach the right node because then we're gonna pass in null, uh, null down here. And one simple way to figure out that we are done is simply by checking if uh, the node is null. Then we don't want to keep calling down that path anymore. So that's simply our exit uh, strategy here. If the node is null, then we want to return zero because we don't have a value there. And this is it. So if we come back here to the prompt and uh, we're not even gonna need to pass in uh, pass in something to this uh, program anymore. We just do run and we got that the sum was 12. Uh, it was exactly what we expected. So let's try, uh, let's, so let's make sure that this really works. Uh, we can go ahead and tell this left node here that that itself just has a left node. Let's try to format this. And our right node can also have its own uh, left node. Just to make sure that we are handling the case when, uh, when a node simply just has a, a reference to either right or left. And we added four, uh, four two times here, so we should get that the sum is 20. And it works. So now we've written a recursive function that sums up a binary tree. So I hope you guys enjoyed the screencast and we're gonna try to cover uh, a couple of uh, build 2016 uh, announcements that were made on the Microsoft conference this week in the coming screencasts. So until next time, uh, have a nice day guys. Bye.